Well, good morning. Welcome to Palm Sunday. Um, it's cloudy out and I heard thunder, but we're safe inside and hopefully we'll have a wonderful service today. I've already enjoyed uh, Dr. Aaron Cole playing Behold the Lamb. If you haven't seen it yet, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I can't wait to see Shirley's, oh, that's right, Anna sang this morning. The old rugged cross, and it was beautiful too. So we've already been blessed today, haven't we? Good morning, Courtney. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Myrtle. Good morning, uh, Aunt Doris. Let's see who else, just for a second. I always like reading who's uh, worshiping with us today. Courtney, I'm so glad you're able to watch us today. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started with our service. Um, and Wanda and Fred are going to be online. Good. All right, first uh, announcements. I want to thank uh, everyone who came out yesterday to help clean up Featherbed Lane, which is the, the road running down to our church. Uh, Jennifer and Wilbur Hall organized it, and uh, mostly Jennifer, I think. Um, but uh, uh, let's see, Wilbur and Jennifer were out yesterday, Beth Berry. Um, we had uh, Donna Damien, Dustin Harris, and David and Judy Sterling. And Jennifer told me they picked up over 40 bags of trash on that road. So if you're listening and you throw trash out, don't do it anymore. It'll save us a lot of work. So anyway, thank you, Jennifer, for heading that up and for everyone who came out to help. Um Next Sunday will be Easter Sunday, and obviously we're still not in church, but uh, we plan to have a special service and a, a, a virtual online service, so I hope you'll join in with us. And this is a, a special holy week, isn't it? And unfortunately, this is our second Easter that we've uh, had to spend apart. But anyway, I just pray that... Uh, you're doing well and that you hang in there because I can't wait to one day we turn on the news or read in the newspaper that the coronavirus has been defeated. Um, but for right now, we're doing what we think is safe. The elders are going to talk about, uh, talk about our church, not this coming week, but the next week and, and see what we come up with. So anyway, Palm Sunday is today. You know, sort of creeped up on us, hadn't it? And, I, and you who have been doing Lent, um, I'll just tell you, I have not had any sweets since the first part of February. And I know Fred's told me he hadn't had any ice cream since then, too. And he's used to having ice cream every night. So anyway, Lent ends uh, Saturday, which I believe it's April the 3rd. So Fred, you can you can eat all the ice cream you want on Saturday. The one thing that I plan on getting, I know it sounds silly, is some jelly beans. I love jelly beans, and I haven't been able to eat jelly beans. Everywhere you go, there's jelly beans. So anyway, um, that's what's going on right now. So. Anyway, as we begin the service today that leads us into the Holy Week of Easter, um, it's a it's a, a, a different mix of emotions, isn't it? Uh, for one thing, we're we're praising the Lord, and then the other, as a believer, should make you sad of what Jesus had to go through on that cross. But let's open up in prayer as we worship together on this Palm Sunday. Um, let's remember Frank Harlow in our prayers. And I know there are many others, and God knows who they are. And I just pray that you will uh, you will lift those up to the Lord too. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this day that you've given us. God, we thank you for an opportunity to be together this morning online. And God, I thank you that you've given us the technology that we can do that. I pray for Frank, God. I pray that you'll be with him. 
and uh, and Father, the others who are sick. And you know who they are. You know who are lonely today. You know who needs a special touch from you. And God, we pray for those who lost loved ones this week and be near and dear to them. Now, God, I just pray that you'll be with our service today. God, give me the words that I need to say. May they come from you to touch people's hearts in your holy and precious name. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, let's do children's time. Okay, children. Hopefully you're there. And I want to talk this morning about, it's called a goodbye meal. Just before Jesus went to the cross to die for your sins and for me, he got the disciples together for a final meal. And they were celebrating some a holiday called Passover. And so Jesus got all his disciples. Look, see how they were? He got all their disciples around a table. Now, the tables back then didn't have any chairs. So people sat on the floor. How would you like to sit on the floor and eat your meal uh, every time, boys and girls? But Jesus got all his disciples together, and he, and he broke bread, and he gave them all a piece of bread, and he said, this is my body, and whenever you eat it, think of me. And then he poured some wine and gave each of the disciples, and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant or the new promise and think of me every time that you drink it and so the disciples didn't quite understand what Jesus was talking about but Jesus knew that there was one disciple who was there that would soon betray him and his name was Judas Judas was going to turn Jesus over to the to the priests who wanted to see Jesus die. And so for 30 pieces of silver, Judas betrayed Jesus. Now, I know you wouldn't do that, and I wouldn't either. And while they were eating, Jesus actually said, the one that I'm handing the bread to now is going to betray me and turn me over to my enemies to be killed. And then he gave the piece of bread to Judas. And Judas got up quickly and went to the priest and told him where Jesus was. And then Jesus did something that was really, really humbling. And you, humble means that you're not proud. Is that Jesus got a basin of water and began washing the disciples' feet. Now, boys and girls, you might ask, why would Jesus do that? Well, that was a task for the lowest servant that was in the house. Because when the people wore sandals walking through the desert, their feet would get very dirty. And when someone came into your house, the servant would get down on his hands and knees and wash the feet of those who came visiting. And Jesus did that to all his disciples to show, him, show them that he has come to serve them. And in fact, they are to serve others. And after they had done that, they went out into the, the Hill of Olives or the Mount of Olives and they sang a song. And so Jesus then went to the Mount of Olives and he got on his knees and he began praying because he knew that the enemies were on their way to take him to be crucified. And he prayed many times, if it's your will, God, don't let this happen. But if it is your will, then I'm okay with it. And the, and the enemies came with Judas, and they took Jesus away to crucify him. 
So boys and girls, Jesus loves you very much. And he died on the cross for you. And he died on the cross for me. So that we might have everlasting life. All right. That's our Bible lesson for today, boys and girls. Now let's go to God in prayer as we begin the sermon. Father, we thank you for uh, the ability to worship again this morning. God, help us as we think about that Palm Sunday and the week that was about ready to happen. God, we thank you that you willingly laid down your life for us. God, now open our eyes, open our minds, and open our hearts to the words that are said today. In Jesus' name, amen. So today I want us to look at uh, Christ just prior to the crucifixion. And again, it's a sad time, but it's also a time of rejoicing. And just prior to this, Jesus had brought salvation to the house of Zacchaeus. Remember the tax collector that climbed the tree? Jesus went with him to his home, and, and, and they all became believers. And Jesus had also been telling parables, and those are stories, about the kingdom of God and about what was getting ready to happen to him. But we'll see in the scripture today something very touching, that Jesus actually wept. And even as all the people were lined up along the roads and they were celebrating Jesus, thinking he was going to be uh, the king of war that would that would lead them to overthrow the Romans, we will see in our in our sermon today that Jesus cried when he was um, when he was coming into Jerusalem and riding the donkey. And the Bible tells us there's three times, three times that Jesus cried. One of them was then at Palm Sunday. Another one was when um, Jesus wept just before raising Lazarus from the dead. And then Jesus wept when he was offering up prayers and crying uh, at the uh, Mount of Olives where he was on his knees praying. And he says, and the Bible says that sweat drops came out as blood. And he was crying to the Lord because he knew what was coming. How bad that must have been, you know, to, to think that you know what's coming. And yet you will only do it because you love the people uh, so much that he loved you and loved me so much. And the Greek word. Anywhere you see in the Bible, wept actually means to wail out loud. So if you can imagine, if you've ever been like that before, when you've lost someone very dear to you, and you just cry that uncontrollable cry, and and you it's a wail, and that's that's what that's what Jesus was doing when he said he wept. It wasn't just a tear running down his cheek; it was he was wailing out loud. So. The events of the Passover are found in all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and each one is written a little bit different. But we know that here we are, Jesus and his disciples in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. That was a yearly festival where all the people traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate. And you know that the, the uh, celebration of the Passover they were celebrating their freedom from Egypt. And when the, the death angel, the Passover angel, went through their camp and because the blood was on their doorway, passed over them and went into Egypt and killed the firstborn so that Pharaoh would let the people go. And so we see here also in our scripture that Jesus is also weeping over Jerusalem. So why did Jesus weep over Jerusalem? And I'll read the passage in just a few minutes. Because Jesus knew in 40 years that the Jews were going to revolt against the Romans. And the Romans came in and crushed them and burned the city down. And Jesus was offering the people peace. But yet the people wanted war. And so that's why he was weeping. Because he knew what was going to happen. And not only that, he was weeping because of their unbelief. Because the Jewish people and others had rejected him as Lord and Savior. 
And the sad thing was it didn't have to happen, but because of sin it did. Palm Sunday reminds me of a little boy who was sick on Palm Sunday and had to stay home from church with his mom. And his father went to church and he came home with a palm branch. The little boy was curious and said, why do you have that palm branch, Dad? And his dad said, you see, when Jesus came into town, everyone waved palm branches to honor him. So we got palm branches today at church. The little boy said, Oh, man, the one Sunday I miss is the Sunday that Jesus shows up. Well, hopefully I got a little chuckle out of that. But Palm Sunday is the day when a whole city threw a parade for Jesus. How many of you like going to parades? Boys and girls, adults? And the thing about a parade is you don't know what's coming next. You get to see the, the floats and the different things, and then here comes something different. And people love parades. So if you love a parade, think about the type of parade that the people were throwing for Jesus. And they were, they were laying down their coats and they were shouting, Hosanna to the King. And we know that it should have been a joyous day and everybody was rejoicing except Jesus. And isn't it interesting that the same people who were crying out Hosanna were probably the same people in a few days that were crying out, crucify him, crucify him. Okay, this morning, open your Bibles to Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 44. I'll give you a minute to get your Bible so you can follow along. Luke 19. 28 through 44. Do you have it? Okay, here we go. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem, and as he approached Bethage and Bethany on the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. That's important. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say the Lord needs it. Those who, those who were sent ahead went and found it just as it had been told to them. And as they were untying the colt, the owners came and said, why are you untying this, the colt? And they replied, the Lord needs it. And they brought it to Jesus, throwing their, their cloaks or their, their outer garments on the colt. And put Jesus on it. And as he went along, people spread their their coats on the road. And when he came near the place where the road goes down from the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Even the disciples were getting caught up in the rejoicing. And they were saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Now remember, they weren't looking for a king of peace, but looking for a king of war. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees, the religious leaders in the crowd, said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, Jesus replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. And said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace. But now it's hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you. And encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground. You and your children within the walls. They will not leave one stone on another. Because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. At this point in scripture, Jesus had already been to Jericho where he healed Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus was blind. And Jesus again had spoken with Zacchaeus. And he had told the parable of the ten talents and the lady who lost one. Jesus was telling them how important it is for all the believers to come into the kingdom. 
We're not sure, but Jesus may have spent the night at Bethany, at the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, where Mary had anointed his feet and Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. And how Judas Iscariot had gotten so upset because Mary had um, had poured expensive perfume on Jesus' feet and wiped it with her hair. And Judas said, why wasn't all this money given to the poor? Instead, it was wasted on Jesus' feet. But we also learned that it wasn't, Judas wasn't concerned about that. Judas won the money put in the treasury so he could steal it. Now, Bethphage was a village next to Bethany. It was here that Jesus sends two of his disciples and, and to find a donkey. And interesting, we always see Jesus walking everywhere he went. So, and he's never riding an animal. So why a donkey? Well, many of you already know the answer to that. But here, let me help you. There weren't, first of all, there weren't many horses in that area and only nobility rode horses. But Jesus chose a donkey because a donkey was associated with peace. A horse was associated with war. And so Jesus came in riding that donkey and made it a symbol of peace. And did you notice in verse 30 that Jesus wanted to ride one that had that was unbroken? Now, any of you out here who are horse people, um, and I'm not, but I've seen on TV those people who try to, to break a horse, and a lot of them end up eating dust because a horse doesn't want to be ridden. But Jesus got on this donkey who had never been ridden before, and, and it just started walking, which means Jesus had authority not over of the people, but also of this unbroken animal. That Jesus could tame the spirit of a wild animal, and Jesus could contain could tame the spirit of the people that were there too. But unfortunately, the, the stubborn hearts of the Jews would not be broken, and they would not admit in their heart that Jesus was king. So Jesus borrowed one. So Jesus apparently had gone into the town before and said, one day two people will come. And what I want you to do is when they ask for a colt, is give it to them. Now, isn't it interesting? Jesus owns everything anyway. But he wanted to get that set up ahead of time. And so when the two disciples went in there, into the town, and st just started untying the donkey, the man who owned it said, what are you doing? Are you stealing our donkey? No, the Lord needs it. And they said, please take it. So Jesus had already set that up for the disciples. And the, the men had, had, uh, had decided to give that donkey to Jesus to ride because it was his in the first place. So why did the disciples put their coats on the donkey? Because in Old Testament times, it showed respect for a king. A king would not ride bareback. A king would have people put their coats on them so that the king would sit on that. And the people did this even when a king called Jehu was anointed king and came in and the people put their coats on the horse. But here Jesus is coming into Jerusalem as king of king and lord of lords. He's riding on a donkey as a king would ride in peace. And he would soon be given a crown, wouldn't he? But in this case, a crown of thorns. They weren't interested in a king who came in to set up a kingdom in their hearts. No, they didn't want a prince of peace. They wanted a prince of war. They not only didn't want to be under the authority of Rome, they also didn't want to be under the authority of Christ. Jesus wasn't the Messiah that they were expecting. But we know Jesus Christ came in to rule our hearts, to take control of our life, to be the Lord of your life.
But the people did not want to submit to that. And neither do many people today. But what a huge celebration. The parallel story to this is found in Matthew 21, 8, where it says a very large crowd spread their clothes on the road, and others were cutting branches from trees and spreading them on the road. And this was the kind of entry given to a conquering king. It's well, it was like the red carpet treatment. So who would have been in the crowd that day? I think that Mary and Martha and Lazarus would have been there. I think that Bartimaeus would have probably been there, who had just been had his sight restored. And I think Zacchaeus would have been there because he had found the Savior. He had paid back his debt to society, and he made peace with God. I think the lepers would have been there that day, the ones where Jesus cleansed their skin. I think maybe even Jairus' daughter was there where Jesus brought her back from the dead. But there were those there who truly loved Jesus, but there were there there were, there were those there who truly hated Jesus also, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. The keepers of the law were there, not to celebrate the Lord, but to find the Lord saying something wrong that they might get him and arrest him. They were filled with jealousy. And Jesus realized as he listened to the, the voices of Hosanna, Hosanna, that he would soon hear them saying, crucify him, crucify him. I have a very simple question for you today. Where are you in that crowd? Are you standing there as a humble servant before the Lord, giving him your best? Or are you not even knowing who Jesus Christ is? And thinking that the season that's coming up is all about Easter bunnies and Easter egg hunts. And all those are good. I enjoy doing that. But that's not the purpose of Easter, is it? And then the interesting where the Pharisees said, You disciples, be quiet. We don't want to hear you praising the Lord. And Jesus said, If you don't praise the Lord, these rocks will sing out. Boy, Jesus loves our praise. I've only heard singing rocks one time, and that was in uh, Lure Caverns. Maybe y'all have been there. I'm not sure how they did that, but it was. But can you imagine if the if the disciples in the crowd had been quiet, and all the rocks along the road began singing out to the Lord? And Jesus would have done that too. And all of a sudden, as the parade began going into Jerusalem, all of a sudden, everything stopped. It's sort of like rush hour on interstate, where one car stops and they all stop. And Jesus stopped, and the people didn't know why he had stopped. And so the disciples went up to him, thinking they were going to ask him, Why did you stop? But as soon as they got to Jesus, what did they see? They saw him crying. Now, you see how that didn't go along with what was happening at that time. There were people rejoicing and calling him the greatest of all and, and hail the king. But yet Jesus was sitting on that donkey crying. Jesus often reacted emotionally to the poor, to the hungry, to the sick, and to those that he had compassion on. And as Jesus passed over the Mount of Olives, he knew that he would soon be there on his knees praying for the people and praying to have strength to get through the crucifixion. He, Jesus looked out over the city, and again, he knew that Jerusalem was going to be destroyed. And many of the people that were there would be killed along with their children. Jesus was bringing them peace, but yet they wanted war. 
Isn't that sort of like people today? People who know Christ have a peace within them, don't they? People who don't know Christ are always at war with one another. There's always something wrong. There's always something negative. That's not Jesus talking. Jesus wants us to be a peaceful person. But yet they did not want to be peaceful. And that's why Jesus wept. Look in Matthew 23, verse 37. Jesus says, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Did you hear those words? How Jesus wanted the people to come like a, like a chicken gets a, the babies under its wings. He wanted them to come into the safety of his salvation, but they were not willing. So I wonder about you today. What do you see? Do you see the peace that Jesus is offering? Or do you see the things that people worry about? The pandemic? Job security? Health? Or the lack of health? Broken relationships? Some people are so busy worrying about these things that they don't even bother to consider. Those things are not eternally important. Or do you see Jesus and recognize him for who he is? The Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. When he turns and looks into our hearts, I wonder what he sees. Will he weep once again because of what he sees? Or will he look in and see the peace that he has put in our lives? And he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy that I have given you and the peace that I have given you. At the heart of Palm Sunday is Jesus' desire to bring peace into your life. And he is willing to carry any burden that you have today. Jesus wants to make a triumphal entry into your heart this morning. So today can either be a day of triumph, where you accept Christ in your heart, and you begin getting that peace, or today could be a day of tragedy, of tear, tears and sorrow, or wouldn't you rather have tears of joy? But again, it's up to you. I urge you to please today, Accept the master of peace. Bring the peace that God gives into your heart. It can settle your nerves, fill your minds and bodies and spirit that sometimes are in the midst of an uproar around you and give you assurance that everything is okay. And only Jesus can do that. The things of this earth are temporary. Yes, we all have problems. We all have hurts. We all have things that we worry about occasionally. But I like it that Jesus says, I will give you peace no matter what is going on around you. Accept the peace today. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this time that we could be here this morning and listen to your word. God, I pray if there's someone out there today that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that today might be the day of salvation for them, that they might ask forgiveness of their sins and ask you to come into their life. God, I thank you so much for this Palm Sunday that we can celebrate. And God, make us mindful this week of your sacrifices because you love us so very much. Bless us this day, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, and I will see you guys tomorrow at 4 p.m. as we continue our Bible study. Have a good day, and please hang in there with us. 
Um, I know we all would like to be back in church right now. I was just looking at the government restrictions again, um, of the governor's restrictions, and we're going to talk about it and see what we can do, if we can do anything. We may not until the restrictions are lifted. But hang in there. We're doing the best we can, honestly, during this time. We're not purposely closing the church. We're closing it for your safety and for the safety of others. Let me just remind you, as we, as I've said before, that if we were to open the church right now, we could only have 30 people in there, six feet apart. And I just don't know who I would say is okay to come to church and who wouldn't be. So it's a tough decision. So please pray for the elders who make those decisions and pray for me as I pastor and minister to you and to others uh, during this time. It hasn't been easy. It's been a struggle at times. I haven't been able to to get in there and, and visit you like I wanted to. But things are starting to, to uh, loosen up a little bit. I got both of my coronavirus shots. It's been about a month now. And so, but I'm still uh, very cautious because of my wife's health. I certainly don't want to bring anything home to make her sick. And the same way with you. I don't want to bring anything into your home. So again, be patient. Thank you for sticking it out with us for this long. Continue to stick out because I tell you, like I always say, there's always a beginning, a middle, and an end to everything. And I believe we're getting close to the end. So God bless you, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.